long is this gonna take? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you remember these things from grade school, Sam? These Alka-Seltzer rockets? Basically, it involves a foam canister and one of these Alka-Seltzer tablets or anything basically that fizzes and bubbles. Basically, Alka-Seltzer tablets are sodium bicarbonate and citric acid. And when you mix them with water, they release a lot of uh, CO2 gas. And when you cap it, you build up the pressure inside this little canister and eventually the canister will rupture at a certain PSI and all the escaping gases will push this up and come out all over the place and generally propel that into the sky. So, I love these since grade school and I used to do them a lot. I haven't done them forever in a while, but hey, I figured this may, would make a nice video saying to see if we can make really, really good Alex Lizzo rockets using just a foam canister with minimal modifications and one single tablet or at least parts of a tablet. So, you think we should challenge, uh, do a challenge, Sam? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's see if you can build the best rocket. I think we should get some data first, though, and see what's the optimum amount of water to Alka-Seltzer tablet ratio to see what sends us up the highest. Okay, we're gonna start by seeing what's the optimum ratio of water versus Alka-Seltzer um, tablet inside one of these cylinders. Now, we fire these a few times in the shop, and obviously they, do, they run into the ceiling, so we're not getting much data out of that. So we're gonna fire these with quarters on top, and we're gonna see just how high they go. Basically, we're going to keep changing the amount of water to Alka-Seltzer ratio in the canister to see which gives us, you know, the highest reaction. Because the quarters will keep it from running to the ceiling and we can also graph it on a much lower scale without having to go outside and trying to run a tape measure up into the sky. So let's test this. Okay, that's pretty awful. So, 25 milliliters, I think we grabbed them all here. But anyways, we're gonna use the optimum ratio of water, and I guess it's now time to see who's got the best, um, oh, this is a rocket. Right, Sam? Here you go, catch. I do. Oh. You, can you flip this thing while it's recording? Oh, you can't flip this while it's recording, wow. Okay, thanks, Dave. Hi, guys, DJ Osmo. Thanks to Dave. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, Sam has no idea what's happening. But let's just say I planned my rocket a little bit um, to be a little more fancy than his. So what I got here is a brushless motor. Now this is going to spin very fast because the plan is to take this tube, this Alka-Seltzer container, put it inside the tube, but also have the tube attached to this motor. So we're going to spin it very fast so when the rocket fires off it will be gyroscopically stabilized and totally destroy his rocket in all aspects and crush the competition. So I got some work to do. Oh, surprise, surprise, it didn't leave the tube. Do you know why I didn't leave the tube, Dave? No, why? My plan was to initially spin this whole thing around and around and around and shoot it like I mentioned earlier. But it looks like I'm gonna have to change this because I wanted to fire this like a mortar and see how it would perform because, you know, maybe it focused on the pressure in here and maybe the gas were still expanding. But that is most likely not happening in the case of Alka-Seltzer tablets because it's it's only bubbling at a, at a certain rate. Now the problem with this is it's it's, it's exiting the tube at a very high velocity for a very short amount of time. But the problem after that, after it runs out of steam, it's just coasting on it under its own speed and, and uh, velocity. But the problem with that, though, is this tube is like a vacuum. Like, if you notice, I turn this like this. It's not falling any faster. That's because the pressure in here needs to equalize with the pressure on the outside. When this tube canister is moving through here, it's creating a negative pocket of pressure here, pushing more air out through here. So air, air is trying to rush past this cylinder itself, and, and that's kind of causing it to stall. So I'm actually gonna make this thing a little bit shorter and not utilize that as part of the design. So that makes my life a little bit easier. Alright Dave, so Sam's not here and I'm just done with my thingamajigger. Yeah. Here, check this. So I'm going to close this box. 
And now we have gyroscopic stability. I may have lost the uh, launch tube, but who cares? I think this is better anyways. Oh yeah, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. This is totally stupid and overdone, but this is great. I love it. All right, let's try to fire it. Got the seltzer water in here. <laughs> Those spinning. I may need to work on that a little bit because it's uh, vibrating too much and this thing. Uh, that was cool. Let's test it a few more. <laughs> this is awful. It's not working anywhere near as fine as it is going to work. Right, just... Still doesn't work the way I want it to, but I just tried a lower speed this time. But the problem is it really is just slinging all the contents into the wall and then just vibrating like this constantly. And also the water, the liquid is also being pushed to one side. As soon as that container gets a little off axis, all the water just sloshes towards it one side, just goes around and around and around. And we just can't get this to work by moving it. Hmm, I'm gonna rethink this a lot. Thank you. All right, new idea. The problem with this is it just, it, it has no mass. So having this amount of liquid in here is enough to displace this thing and cause it to move rupture violently back and forth. So I'm thinking, well, since that part is, is, is always gonna be unbalanced, why don't I just make it just a small part of the, the, the mass of the wheel? So if we make, let's say this is our current little thing, it only has so much mass. What if I made a giant thing like this with a lot of mass out here? And also I'll cut slots for pennies and all that, and then have the tiny thing in here. So this tiny little imbalance in the center, you know, just having a little bit of weight on one side versus the other is not so great. What do you think, Sam? Do you know what's going on? I know you just showed up. I've been testing this for the last couple of days. What do you do? <laughs> you can't figure it out, can you? you I told you you'd be surprised. Electric. Did you put like a valve in there or something? Or an agitator? What the heck? I'm having some serious difficulties. I'll show you in a second. So yeah, clip it on and... That's lame. This <laughs> is gyroscopically stabilized. But the problem is, all the material is being slung into the corner, so I can't get a good launch because it's just not. But it's 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 throwing it off balance too. One because you know if it's just a little bit wobbles a little bit, all the water you know slings inside. Oh, that's cool. What happened? It looks like it actually works. It looks like it's tumbling though. No, it's spinning. Oh, it's um. Wait, you think it's gyrating? It's just going left and right a little bit near the top. Yeah. Okay. I think it's pretty fair enough. I think I'm going to continue on with this, but you should get to work with your rocket. Let me just go ahead and... Uh Yay, mine's done, Sam. All right, what, what, where's yours? Uh, you're late. Mine's right there. You haven't even really... Wait, what is this? This is my rocket. That looks pretty and bad. I also made these. Oh, what's that I do one? need this though. No, you don't. For launching. No, 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 you don't. See, this goes on here. Okay. And then. This looks very standard and not very this exciting. This screws onto my gun. And now you cheated. No. Oh, so, this is that not. Counts. This is not part of the Alka Seltzer thing. This is. You put Alka Seltzer and water right here. I made a rocket launcher. Uh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna pretend I never saw this. Okay, well, let's, go, let's just go shoot. Oh, them. also, you know, while I was making this, before we go shoot these, I made this. This is probably uh, a little bit something more of the, you know, normal speed for normal people to make. This is this is actually aerodynamically stable, so you launch off the launch rod, and by the time it's got sufficient launch, velo launch velocity, the fins would take over and the thing will actually travel in a straight line versus other rockets that I've seen like this, which tend to tumble during flight and aren't actually, you know, stable. Oh, it doesn't fit. I mean, we can adapt it to use that, do that later, but let's just try it on this first. Okay, let's go test it.
stuck us in a tree, Sam. Get it down. The results are in. Okay, and dead last we have, where to go? This guy, the standard out salsa container. It is not very aerodynamically stable and it simply just tumbles and pushing a shape like this through the air versus do something like this through the air. It's not very efficient, so it scored the worst at 20.5 feet, I believe. Anyways, in second place, we have this gyroscopically stabilized spin rocket. Now, I think this one didn't do as well because some of the material is still left inside of it because it's a difficult force pushing against the sidewalls, so it didn't go very high. In third place, we have the simple to build, easy, aerodynamically stabilized fin rocket. Now, this thing uh, actually did fairly well. It went up to, I think, 23.5 feet or so. And obviously, Sam, I'm gonna have to give this to you, but you won with your your yeah. janky, your janky jank rocket. It looks so good. I think you could have gone a lot further if this thing was actually aerodynamically stable. And now, reviewing the footage of this thing going up in the air, it is hilarious. At speed, it is aerodynamically clean enough that it is sort of stable because if you watch, it was tracking up fine. But as soon as it actually had to be aerodynamically um, neutral, this thing was just tumbling and flopping all over the place. So I guess uh, the lesson to take from this, if you want to win your alga seltzer competition, is to use about, uh, how much was that, Sam? 50 milliliters of water? Yeah, 10 to 20 is safe. Yeah, 10 to 20 is safe. 20 is on the high side, so probably 10 to 15 is your, your best bet. Use a quarter of the alga seltzer pellet, and also add fins to your rocket, and maybe a lightweight nose cone. But more importantly, make sure your thing is actually aerodynamically stable. Because if you look at this rocket when we drop it, it will always go nose first and be stable all the way, you know, until it hits the ground or something. Now your rocket, on the other hand, once uh, released, it's not stable. It's not trying to go nose first because the fins are not strong enough to kind of push it back this way because the center of uh, pressure is about, where would this be on this? It's probably behind the center of gravity, which is not good for a rocket. But you always want the center of pressure behind the center of gravity in rockets unless you've got some sort of external driving force for stability, but that's a lot more complicated than the simple Alka-Seltzer rocket challenge, which is, you know, meant for fourth graders or something. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to trying something else with Alka-Seltzer rockets, maybe where we, where we do an unlimited competition so you can come up with best design where we're not limited to foam canister and we don't have to cheat with whatever this is. Because yeah, if you really want to win, build one of those. Yeah, this is, this is not a rocket. This is more of a, a cannon with a missile attachment thing. Because my definition of a rocket is a rocket that propels itself with a fuel source still inside of it and it's still, you know, thrusting to go somewhere. Versus something like this, which stores it all here, and then you just, oh, it's all the stuff in it. It still releases the pressure and then it flies off to wherever. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe leave some suggestions on what you want to see us do. Build your own alka rockets because this is something pretty easy that most people can do. Just be sure to be kind of safe with this because, I mean, I guess they do explode and you can get alka water in your eye, which wouldn't be pleasant. So be sure to like the video, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Okay, bye.